Hey class, now I want to talk a little bit about um, uncertainty analysis using dependent measurements, or a variable that uh, depends on other variables or independent variables that have their own individual uncertainties. Okay, so, um, with something with a dependent measurement, um, we need to use the root sum square method. Okay, um, let's say, for example, let's just make up something, we're going to measure some variable um, z that uh, is equal to um, x squared y. Okay, um, And let's say uh, x has its own um, bias and um, or, or its own uh, uncertainty analysis that we had to do, you know, for example maybe the uncertainty in x we had to already combine its own um, random errors and its own uh, bias errors in order to get the uncertainty in x and uh, maybe that turned out to be something like maybe uh, 0.3 uh, inches let's say and y let's say we also had to do that for y on its own it's it's a sensor and it has its own uh, bias errors and and um, its own, uh, sorry, these are all supposed to be squared, right? So it has also its own random errors. And calculating that, we find it has uh, an uncertainty of, um, let's say, 0.1 seconds. Um, and let, let's say x typically is, uh, let's say, 4 inches and y is uh, typically uh, three seconds. Uh, that means we can find the nominal value of z just by plugging in x and y. We can see that z is uh, four inches squared times three seconds, which would uh, result in uh, 16 times three, which uh, if I can do my math right in my head, 48. So 48 inches squared times seconds, whatever this happens to be. I'm just making this up. Um, but now we want to know, what is the uncertainty in Z? Well, that uncertainty depends on the uncertainties of X and Y. And in order to do that, we need to do the root sum square method. So the uncertainty in Z is going to be the square root of the uncertainty in X times the partial of z with respect to x squared plus the uncertainty in y times the partial of z with respect to y. And we have to do each one of those um, partial derivatives in squared terms for each uh, variable in our z equation. So but now, now that we know uh, the uncertainty in x, the uncertainty in y from their own individual uncertainty analyses. Uh, we can plug that in. All we have to do is just get our, our partial derivatives and plug in their values. So we can calculate those. Uh, first, uh, the uncertainty in x times in the partial of z with respect to x, that's 2xy plus the uncertainty in y times the partial of z with respect to y will give us x squared. And now we have to just move this up a little bit, plug in our, our calculated values. So x is 4, y is 3, and certainly in x is 0.3, and our certainty in y is 0.1. I don't think I remember that, so I'm going to have to maybe zoom up a little bit. That's going to equal the square root of the uncertainty in x, which is 0.3 inches times 2 times x, which is 4 inches times y, which is 3 seconds squared, plus our uncertainty in y, which is 0.1 seconds times x squared, which is 4 inches 
squared. That uncertainty is squared. So we can finish off that radical. So, oh, excuse me, moving the wrong thing here. Um, now that we know these, now we can uh, uh, actually calculate and uh, simplify this a little bit. What I want to point out is, let's say we multiply some of these together. Um, uh, 3 times 4 is 12 uh, times uh, 2 is 24. So uh, I'm not going to multiply by the uncertainty yet. This this term was from the uncertainty. Let's just leave that there for a second. So 0.3 inches times 24. We have inch seconds squared plus our uncertainty in the uh, second uh, parentheses is 0.1 seconds times 4 squared is 16 inches squared. Um, now you can see here a couple things. First, I want to point out um, we have an uncertainty in x times its partial, uncertainty in y times its partial. You can see here that the uncertainty in x is not only bigger, but it's also multiplied by the biggest partial. That means this term, this whole term right here, is going to dominate. Uncertainty in x is going to create the worst error in z. And so if we had a pick of which of these two to improve, x or y, it looks like we'd want to improve x by maybe buying a, a little better sensor or, or trying to reduce the error in x. And that will uh, reduce the error the most in z. Um, now, if we, uh, if we combine these terms, then we're going to get 0.3 times 24, I'm calculate this, is a 7.2, so 7.2 uh, seconds times inches squared, squared, and 0.1 times 16 is 1.6 seconds inches squared squared. Um, and you can notice here each under each um, parenthesis we have the same units second inches squared seconds times inches squared it looks like sin squared that's not good um, uh, and you notice how original uncertainties in x was in inches and uncertainty in y was seconds and what these partial derivatives do is they take care of the unit conversions. So if we uh, if we go back up and look, uh, z is in units of inches squared seconds, or second times inches squared. And so these partial derivatives helped us to take care of the unit conversions. So if you're doing an uncertainty analysis and your units aren't coming out, it's probably because you're not doing your partial derivatives correctly. Um, but if we can uh, continue to calculate this, take the square and sum, uh, sum them together and take the square or sorry, square each term, add them together, square root it, uh, we get 7 point about 3.8 inches squared times seconds. Um, and so that is our error. And we have a 95% confidence in that error because we assume the error going into it that uh, uh, these errors were 95% confidence. So our output is z is nominally 48 and so that means we can say with 95 percent confidence z is 48 plus or minus 7.38 inches squared seconds and now we have a 95 percent confidence in that measurement um, I hope you can see uh, from this example that first we need to look at um, we can look at the partial derivatives to see which of the uh, uh, dependent or sorry independent variables affect the dependent variable z and we can also uh, use the units to make sure we're converting correctly and that our partial derivatives are correct and that we get a uh, get the right output